1996, after the release of The Frighteners, New Zealand director Peter Jackson was hired by Universal Pictures to direct a remake of the 1933 classic King Kong, a film he had loved since he was eight or nine years old. Now, Universal had wanted to remake King Kong as early as 1975, but apparently Dino De Laurentiis did his version for Paramount in 1976 and was a surprise hit. But in 1997, Tristar was making an Americanized version of Godzilla directed by Independence Day director Roland Emmerich, and Disney was doing a remake of Mighty Joe Young. Both would ultimately fail at the box office. As a result, the plug was pulled. So Peter Jackson's next move was to start work on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Based on the J.R.R. Tolkien book, the film series won an amazing 17 Academy Awards, including one for Best Picture. After the series was complete, the green light was given to the remake of King Kong. Now, the remake of King Kong is pretty much the same as the 1933 version. In fact, the film takes place in 1933. But some of the characters are slightly changed a little bit. Carl Denham is modeled more on a young Orson Welles rather than Marion C. Cooper. And what better actor to play the role than Jack Black? I've come into possession of a map. The sole surviving record of an uncharted island. A place that was thought to exist only in myth. Until now, that's where I'll show my picture. In this version, Jack Driscoll is a playwriter rather than the first mate of the venture, and is played by Academy Award winner Adrian Brody. We also get to see what Anne Darrow does in the first minute to the film. She's played by Naomi Watts. But unlike the original film, where she's constantly trying to avoid Kong, she grows to like him and becomes very compassionate towards Kong, which in a sense helps the audience to like Kong. As with the 1933 film, it's a Beauty and the Beast story. Kong is brought to life by computer animation and motion capture. The actor who brought Kong to life was Andy Serkis, just as he brought the character of Gollum to life in the three Lord of the Rings movies. And as you can see, He's amazing. But the characters weren't the only ones that changed. Skull Island is totally redefined. Rather than being a beautiful tropical location like in the original, the island in this version is dark, creepy, and crawling with hideous creatures you never want to encounter. The natives aren't played by extras wearing war paint, these natives are the scariest sons of bitches ever seen on film. They don't worship Kong, they are terrified of him. Kong. But fans of the original film will see little references of the original film scattered all over. You just have to be clever to spot them. The movie opened December 14, 2005 and made $550 million worldwide. As I said in my last review, since the original didn't receive any Oscars, this version made up for it. It wound up winning three Oscars, one of them for Best Visual Effects, and I consider that win to be a tribute to Willis O'Brien. It's hard to pick which one I like best. I'm pleased with both versions. If you haven't seen the original, you must, and if you plan on seeing the remake, get the extended version. Thanks for watching.